Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. We have already seen some introductory videos on the Neo 4J. In this video, we will be looking into how we can import a CSV file in the database of the Neo 4J project. And then we will run some queries to validate that our data is successfully loaded. So the first thing which we are going to do is to create a project. So we'll click on this new button, which you can see on the left side. So I click on this new button and then I see this create project option. I click on the create project option. You can see a project is being created uh, with the name project. So what I can do, I can change the name of this uh, project. So project looks very simple. So I will make it as a demo. Uh, and then I will just click on the perfect button. So now we have created a particular project. The next step is to create a database inside this project. So what we are going to do, we are going to click on this add button. And when you click on this add button, you have this option of local DBMS. You can also go for the remote connection if you are trying to uh, connect a particular database which is which is located in some different location. But since I'm working on my system, so I am going to uh, create a local DBMS. So I click on this local DBMS. So now you can see uh, by default, the name has been given as graph DBMS. So let me change this name. I can give the name as a, a demo database demo underscore database, and then I can put some password. I put some password and you can see here, you can connect with a different version of the uh, new 4J. You can go for the latest one, but I'm keeping the 5.24 as default. Now, next what, next thing is to click on the create button. So once you click on this create button, so the uh, this you can see this so initialization process takes place. The database is now initializing. So it takes sometimes uh, some few seconds or sometimes more than 30, 20, 20, 25 seconds. So once this is being created, you can see it's been a, with a greens, green tick mark or it will show like, okay, this has already initialized. So let's wait for this uh, uh, initialization process. And once we have uh, uh, created this, uh, once the database is initialized, so then what we are going to do, we are going to add our CSV file to this particular database. So let's say, and this is our CSV file, which we are going to use. So this is the soil data is our CSV file, which we am going to use in our uh, new 4 j database. So now you can see uh, so this is being initialized. Now here you can see three buttons are there. So you click on this part and you have this uh, uh, something called as open folder. Now, when you click on this open folder, there's something called as import. So when you click on this import, it will automatically open the directory. So you can see here, it has already opened the directory. Now, when I look into this one, so this is the directory of the project, okay, where I need to import, where I need to put my CSV file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this soil data, control C, then control V. Now I can have, I have my soil data here. Now, once I did this one, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just refresh it, refresh the project here, and then I'm going to click on the start button. So once, the, once this, you can see here, it's showing that it's starting. So once it's been, uh, it's started, it will, the, the database status will change to active. So let's wait for a few minutes. It takes time. And uh, and after this, uh, we are going to uh, run some queries to validate that our database is successfully uh, loaded. So this also process takes some time um, for the database to get initialized after starting. So let's wait for a few minutes. So there are a lot of factors also in network connectivity and uh, sometimes what is the uh, strength of your laptop. So all those things uh, play important role. So it's giving me an error message uh, timed out. Uh, it's uh, it's It has not yet started. So I will try it once again. I will click on the start button. Now you can see it has become active, which means that it has already started. It's still fetching the database. So... Now, once that is being done, once the database is being, you can see it's still, it's in progress, refreshing, fetching database. Let's wait for, yes, now it has completely started. You can see here, it has already fetched the uh, database, new 4 j database, it's active. And now I need to click on this new 4 j to start the new 4 j browser.
Yeah, I clicked on this one. Let's wait. Yeah, so we have already started with the new 4J browser. So this it takes time. So now we have the new 4J browser for this particular project. So now what we are going to do, we are going to try to run some um, some basic queries. So first query is, uh, first we are going to do the load CSV. We are loading the CSV file from, um, let me go, uh, load, load the CSV file from this particular path where uh, our soil database, uh, file underscore data CSV file has been, uh, has been imported. Uh, I'm loading it as a row, and then I'm kind of trying to uh, get the first ten rows. So let me run this one. You can all you can click here, and you can get the values. Also, you can press uh, Control uh, uh, Control Enter. That will also work because I'm using a Windows machine, so you can do also that for running the queries. This way, you can run the queries again. Uh, we can run one more query to get the column names uh, of the data. So for that, we need to run this query. So we are returning the uh, to get the column names. So you see, it's giving us the column names. Uh, then if you want to find out how many rows are there in the CSV file, so we can run this particular code. So you can see here, it is going to count the number of rows inside it. So it's showing me the total number of rows is this much. Then we can also find out the total number of columns in the CSV file. So we can also run this, uh, this code, and it is going to give us the total number of columns. Let me run this one. You can see here, total number of columns are 32 columns are there inside this one. Then let's say we have a, we have a column named as elevation inside the database. So if you look at this particular database, this is the database I'm using. So if I want to find out uh, what is the uh, maximum value present inside this particular column. So what we can do, we can just run this query and we can find out the results. So the maximum value here in this particular code is, this is the maximum value of the uh, elevation column. So this way, uh, when we are running the queries, you can see everything is working fine and all the queries run, ran successfully, which means our data was successfully loaded. So just a quick recapitulation, what we did, first we created a project, then we uh, created a demo, uh, created a database and we put the username and the password. After that, we imported the, uh, we imported the file inside this, inside this database, which is being created by clicking on this one. Uh, clicking on the open folder and clicking on the import button and then copy pasting the our data database and then after that what we did we started the uh, we started the database and after that we started the new 4j browser so this is how we can import our data uh, uh, in the form of a csv file inside the new 4j um, new 4j tool uh, thanks for watching this video let me know if you have any questions in the comment section.